another day, another storm, and another road. Where would this one take us today? Welcome back to the Sunshine State Rails. It's August 2nd, 2021, and we're headed north to the tracks to find just about whatever we can on this late afternoon in August. Though, even if some of the trains wouldn't be, tonight would be a very special night. I'll get to that in just a bit. We'd start the evening by making a quick run up to Ocala to plan a few shots for a future video, and then continue the evening by making our way south from there. Making our way south again, we would hear Q046 calling signals coming north just south of us. O46 is Monday through Friday's Tampa UPS and container traffic out of the Usita Terminal up to Jacksonville's Duval Ramp. So we'd pull off at the north end of the Rurdell Double Track to catch the train at the control point of St. Catherine. And oh, how this shot would go to show one of Florida's absolutes that just slipped my mind this day, the humidity. Having been in the car for the past four hours and having the AC on the whole time, the camera had cooled off quite a bit, and the humidity didn't really like that. So stepping out of the car, my camera fogged right up. I got the lens wiped off right before the engines cleared, but it was just barely enough to see what was passing. Whatever. It's a train. Y'all get the point. Tampa, number two. Headed south further, we get stopped by that Dade City defect detector as Q442 speeding out of Tampa with mixed commodities came north with another AC44 duo for power. The sun was setting quickly now, but there was just enough light in the sky to catch Q442 at the south end of Lacucci. And something to quickly point out while we're here is that Q442 was only measured by the defect detector at 4,200 feet long, which is pretty short considering how big he used to run. However, it's become pretty normal in recent weeks, as CSX has been flip-flopping with the Q045 and Q046 intermodal identifications on the weekends to Q144 and 145. And on the days that they use these symbols, they like to put auto racks and some of Tampa's manifest traffic on the end of the intermodal cuts, which is partially why 442 has no auto rack cut today. However, they only flip-flop these identifications on the weekends, which is why I mentioned that 046 only runs on weekdays. And today, Monday, is a weekday. Continuing the southward trek through Dade City, we can see a clear signal up on the mast at the south end of the siding, indicating that there is a southbound train on the way, and will eventually get here. But Dade City is not where we plan to catch him. We were only a few miles out from our next destination, Vitus Junction. And pulling in, here's why tonight is special. What's up, birthday boy? Bro! 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 What? What are you talking about? I don't know. You can use that in your blooper reel. Happy 16th birthday to my friend Dalton. Since we'd be out for a fair chunk of the night, we'd treat him to a ride in the car and whatever trains we'd catch. With this being the first one, with a clear also up on the mast at Vitus Junction, which would direct him to the left here at Vitus, headed down the Vitus subdivision towards Lakeland. About 10 more minutes would pass and the sunlight would pretty much deplete, but the train would eventually show up. And even now as I'm editing this, I don't know who this was.
8.54 p.m. Some mixed manifest train heading south through Vitus, and I still don't know who it was. We never heard him call any signals, and there was even a conversation with dispatch after the train passed, and even then I couldn't hear who it was, and nobody ever said who it was, so in this case, it's just a train. Although we do know he was headed to Winston, so this may have been an extra Q603, or possibly a very late Q453. Said dispatch conversation, which would have happened right about now, hinted at something happening over in Lakeland. Spoiler alert, nothing actually happened over in Lakeland. But it drove us over that way. All the signals would show red, so we'd drive over to Winston and the dead end street of Gay Road, where we could see a headlight down in the distance. This was the train that we just caught up at Vitus, waiting to get into the yard, as Q604 was building his train, and they couldn't let him in until 604 got out. And in the process of 604 building his train, we figured something out. 604 was going to be taking the Plant City side tonight. So instead of running right up the hill to Lakeland Junction and running out the Vitus subdivision, which this train we just caught came in on, he's going to run out to the west, turning north at Plant City, and taking the S line up to Vitus Junction, and then continuing to way across from there, which is where the Vitus sub would have met up with it anyway. As Q604 was building his train out of the South Y and was questioning how much room they had as Q045, the counterpart to Q046 which we first caught at St. Catherine, was right up the hill at Lumberton according to Dispatch, which is just south of Vitus Junction because there was no way Dispatch was letting 604 go till 45 went. For the record, Q045 is containers and UPS trailers from Jacksonville back to Tampa. And 45 was of big interest to us tonight. And since Q604 would be coming that way anyway, we moved over to Plant City because the lighting there was very good and this train was even better. Right here, me and Dalton would both agree that this was the highlight of the night. Q045 had CSX number 7905 in the lead. This being one of the original 1990s era CW40-8s, recently having been reactivated from storage, which CSX had put them all in in April 2020. And the trailing engine made the lash up complete. An AC4400 number 56, which would have been built in the same general time period, and both of these locomotives are wearing the same paint job, Yellow Nose 2, which is also from that time period. And these are both likely original paint jobs. As 45 was passing, we could hear on the radio 604's job briefing and permission to leave Winston behind 045. Coming down the hill into Plant City to make the northward turn, we'd move over to Reynolds Street to catch the train crossing and turning onto the S line. Q604 is a nightly run of loaded phosphate hoppers, empty sulfur tanks, and mostly empty mixed commodities out of Winston Yard headed up to Waycross, Georgia. <laughs> Tonight, 604 was rocking three engines and 11,000 feet of train, 0.4 horsepower per ton tonight, which apparently is not good. 
He's limited to 10 miles per hour around this curve, but we knew that once he was clear of that, he'd have to rev his engines up to get back up to speed, and that was a noise that we wanted to hear. So we moved up north a ways, north of Plant City Siding, to where his train would have finally been clear of that curve so he could start making his way back to speed. 12.30 a.m., just off to the side of Paul Buckman Highway, Q60402. The night's defect detector was only a little ways in front of us, so we sat around for a couple more minutes to listen for that. CSX Equipment Defect Detector. File post 818.9er. No defects. No defects. Total axle 79er. Zero. Speed 3. Three. End of transmission. And. That was that. Although it was the third now, our outing for August the 2nd would be concluded just after 12.45 a.m. We'd head back to Lakeland to drop off Dalton and then make the drive home ourselves. Once again, very happy 16th birthday to you, Dalton. Thanks for making all 16 of them worthwhile. The rail traffic may have been a little slower tonight, but the night was by no means boring and I'd have done it all again in a heartbeat. Thanks for the good night, Dalton. And thanks to all of you for watching. Hopefully, sooner than later, I'll see you again soon on the Sunshine State Rails.